What's up guys and welcome back to The Realistic Crimmer. This is episode number five. We're managing Wrexham in League Two and we're coming off the back of an actually a winless episode which when you look at it, it doesn't sound too good but the results weren't great but the performances were pretty decent. We obviously got knocked out by, by Rotherham in the cup but we heavily rotated and you know we're playing a championship side but then two draws in a row in the league, three in a row now if you count the Crawley game from a couple episodes ago. Uh, we drew with Crew at home after surrendering a 2-0 lead, but we showed character and fight to grab a draw uh, after we were 2-0 down away at Wimbledon, scoring twice in the last 15 minutes. And uh, Carlos Belaber, the loney from Brighton, he's been a star so far. Two, uh, sorry, three goals in the two games he's featured in. Yeah, we're, lo we're looking all right, but we need to start winning games, turning draws into wins, and that's exactly what we want to do here. We've got the perfect opportunity against Morecambe, the side bottom of League Two right now. One win from their first seven games, and they have the worst defence, 16 goals conceded. Well, we would make that 17 in eight. As uh, Sam Dalby, who's he has impressed me, three goals in three starts in all competitions this season. He's been a decent, decent option off the bench. And he gives us an early lead. There would also be a senior debut uh, in the back line for Dylan Matthews, that absolute gem that we got um, from the Welsh scouting report. He got promoted to our youth academy and then straight into the side. He is in for his debut here, left-sided centre-back. And, uh, well, he'll be frustrated because uh, Morecambe got an equaliser down that left side and it was a pretty tame goal to concede. But uh, on the stroke of half-time, Sam, Sam Dalby was within a couple of inches of getting his and our second goal of the game. He would hit the post, but from the resulting corner, Paul Mullen is starting to find his form and he heads home his fourth goal of the season. And we are leading once again, perfect time to score as well, just on the brink of half-time. 15 minutes into the second half and on the hour mark, Paul Mullen had the chance to get his second and our third of the game, but his shot was saved Good work, though, from Barnett, the right back winning possession back. He plays it to Mullen, and there is Paul Mullen, PM10. This guy smashed it in the National League last season. He's now finding his form in League Two, and that is five in the league now in eight games. So good run of form for Paul Mullen. It looks like the game should be done and dusted now against the league's bottom side. They're, they're going to stay bottom. But with 10 minutes to go, well, they actually worked the ball really well and Morecambe half the deficit and they are just within one now. Their striker McKinnon grabbing his second of the game. And uh, it's a nervy 10 minutes now as we make a few changes. Evans off him. He grabbed a couple of assists in the first half. Good performance from the CDM there. 10 minutes to go, though. Can we see this out? Morecambe looking for an unlikely draw. Well, with a few minutes on the clock, their winger gets to the byline. Heavy touch, though. Toes up. Big tackle from the captain. That's what you love to see. The danger's not clear, though. Header comes in a Conquo with a save. Smart save. Another corner. Headed up. Not cleared. Shot comes in. a Conquo gets to it, though. It's not out. And he makes another save. Wow. <laughs> really on the stretch there. On Conquo having to make three, three saves in injury time to keep us 3-2 up. I thought when we got that third goal, Morecambe would be down and out, but to be fair to them, the visitors did not give up. They kept fighting to the end and they could have snatched a draw. It could have been, it was very nearly four draws in a row in the league, but we do manage to see it out. 3-2 win. We're looking all right. You know, if we turn these draws into victories, you know, that's two defeats in the first eight league games. Not a bad response at all. And uh, Paul Marlin grabbing a brace as well. That's always good to see. I'm quite happy with how we're starting so far. As Sam Dalby comes to me and says, you know, he's happy that he's been given a chance. And to be honest, I've been impressed with Dalby. Three goals and three stars for him. He's not been uh, too bad of an option at all. As we see the league table now, we are 11th, eight games in. As we face Walsall in our next game. Walsall, who four wins, four draws. They are unbeaten. This is going to be a real test. If we want to make a statement, now is the time. As uh, we make six changes to the side that beat Morecambe, Davis and McLean are away on international duty. And this is just the example of why we need depth. Um, the heavy schedule uh, forces us to rotate nearly every game, so we need that depth in the squad. Maybe we'll have to dip our toes into the transfer market in January. Uh, Isaac Hutchinson has scored four in his last three for Walsall as well, so we need to keep an eye out for him. Well, um, just 12 minutes on the clock. Um, Walsall playing a high press, you know, a team high in confidence playing at home at the moment. You would expect them to be dominating the ball. Well, we punished them. O'Connor 
snatches the ball away and then links up with Fletcher and Mullen. And, well, this guy can't stop scoring now. Paul Mullen makes it three in two and gives us an early lead here. Walsall are in trouble. 16 minutes on the clock, Ford, uh, the right wing back, is uh, heavily involved here. He swings in a cross, which is bouncing around. Before it comes back out to Mullen, he finds Lee, but the shot is spooned wide. Good start from Wrexham here. The visitors not being uh, intimidated by Walsall's unbeaten run. We are here to compete and uh, looking to add to our tally. But 10 minutes to go before the half would be up. Allen would burst into the box. A lot of space for him to go in there. But luckily his shot goes over the bar. As we head now into the second half, Belabor into Fletcher. Room for the veteran. Can he make it 2-0? Oh, it's a good save. That could be a key moment in the game. Stephen Fletcher's shot. He should do better there. He should score. It's a save by the Walsall keeper and the score remains one and it's double whammy now because I think that was O'Connor. He's gone down injured and we had to sub the midfielder off. Heavily involved in our first goal, O'Connor, but now he's off. But with 25 minutes to go, Mendy, lovely ball into Paul Mullen. Come on, 2-0 to Wrexham. Paul Mullen makes it back-to-back -back braces. And he is now firing. Great ball from Mendy. I'll be honest, I was actually pressing X to go in with a slide tackle. <laughs> and uh, he actually found a beautiful pass instead. So I'll take it. Mullen makes it too. And uh, Walsall's unbeaten run is now in trouble. Mullen here links up with the belabor. Back to Mullen. Can he get his hat trick? Yes, he can. That should be game. 15 minutes to go. Paul Mullen gets the first hat trick of the junior Parado era. An assist from Belaba and Mullen has just been clinical today. We sub him off to give him some rest along with Belaba. The away fans are singing that Walsall unbeaten run is going to come to an end. Paul Mullen hat trick. Eight goals now in nine league games for him. He is firing on all cylinders and we actually almost get a fourth. But a good save denies Lee late on. But the referee would blow full time. That is it. Walsall's unbeaten run comes to an end. We <laughs> we uh, secure a 3-0 win. Paul Mullen with three goals. And you see there he's holding an invisible ball, apparently. Paul Mullen with a hat-trick. Great result there. And it's back-to-back -back Lee wins. And all of a sudden, you know, like I said, turn those draws into wins. And we will fly up the table. And all of a sudden, we are up there. Great victory. That's a real statement of a win. Walsall hadn't lost in their first eight. We are now up there and we're up in fourth now. Two defeats in our first nine league games, 15 points on the board. It's looking good for Wrexham, you know. It's looking good. But, uh, and just remember as well, you know, we're sat in fourth, but it's the top three that go up automatically. I know the board want us to win the title, but I am happy with promotion. So placing the top three, happy with that. It's very early days yet. As we see there, Paul Mullin, League top scorer, eight goals in nine. It would be some bad news though. Thomas O'Connor's injury was worse than I actually thought. Um, he suffered a broken toe and he will be out for up to three months. Not a great, uh, not a great player to lose. Uh, he was sort of involved in that first goal. His high press uh, worked so well, but O'Connor out for a few months now. As we respond to a few players here, Stephen Davis and Ryan uh, Barnett saying that they want some. They they they're saying that they want to play in the next game, which obviously those two are normally in our starting lineup. Uh, we do have to rotate, though. I wish um, I wish the game would understand that that we do have to rotate as we head into the third and final game of the episode, and it is an EFL Trophy game against Gillingham. The Jills uh, sat in eighth in League Two right now, and uh, for those of you that don't know how the EFL Trophy works, um, it's uh, similar to most round robins: uh, three points, obviously, for a win. But uh, if you draw the game, it goes straight to penalties and then the winner of the penalty gets an extra point. So an interesting little format here. And uh, yeah, just in groups of three, so you'll just play two games. So hopefully we can secure our uh, secure a place into the next round. I will rotate still because the league is my main focus. I actually do make 11 changes to the to the side that beat Walsall. But uh, I'm not opposed to going for this tournament. You know, it's just for League 1, League 2, and um, it's four academy teams as well, but they don't have academy teams in the game, so it's just League 1 and 2 teams here. Um, but I wouldn't mind, you know, this a little bit of silverware. Could, we could definitely do with a piece of that. But we do make 11 changes, and uh, Bryn Lloyd is actually in for a debut, the youth academy graduate, 16 years old, in, the, in, in between the sticks today. He is up there. Matthews as well, his fellow graduate, he is in the team as well. And... It would be a perfect start for us. Um, Ollie Palmer would give us, uh, would grab his first goal of the season in any competition, 
and would give us a 1-0 lead. I haven't actually been too impressed with Palmer so far. He hasn't been he hasn't been that great. A good start for uh, a good start then and a great save here from Lloyd. I uh, love this replay as well. He gets down so quickly down to his left. Great save by Bryn and uh, he keeps the score at 1. As we head uh, just just before the half an hour mark and uh, Young not uh, not an easy chance but a good shot that flies just wide and then I really like this this uh, new animation they've added. Uh, it shows you the last five shots, whether on target, off target, uh, or a goal. And a uh, really, really cool animation, that one. I'm a big, big, big fan of that one. Anyway, from uh, the resulting goal kick, uh, Gillingham gets to work, actually. They work the ball well up to Tom Nichols, and he turns his man way too easily before firing past the debut inning goal. And Gillingham have their equaliser. The Jills did win uh, in their first game, so uh, a win it sees them through in this tournament. Jones on the stroke of half time, a, a cheeky little toe, uh, toe punted effort, nearly catches the uh, Gillingham keeper out, but he saves well. And then 10 minutes into the second half, Nichols would get his second and Gillingham's for, uh, second of the game to give them their first lead of the night. And yeah, it, it was a poor goal to concede. He was free in the box, poor marking from us. And uh, uh, even though we haven't deserved it, we are losing in this game. We did have a great chance, 10 minutes to go uh, to equalise, but the shot was awesome awful from the substitute striker really really poor effort and uh, unfortunately that would be that Gillingham would make it two wins from two in this competition it's a first defeat for us in this competition we still have one more game so we can still qualify but unfortunately uh, we come out uh, with a loss here so we've lost um, the last two cup uh, non-league games we've played but we've only lost two out of nine in the league so the league is the focus. Obviously, we want to win every game, but the league is our main focus and we're going well there. So it's not panic stations yet. yet. Don't you worry. As uh, Barnett and Davis, you know, they they say they aren't happy, but look, lads, you want I want you I want you to play in the more important games. That's that's the that's the truth of it. Anyway, we see uh, Bryn Lloyd. He has a six-month loan deal to Forest Green at Rovers confirmed. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see potentially he could become the number one next season. But there's a long way away, a lot of episodes to go before that happens. But that'll be, a, uh, that'll be the end of today's episode, episode five. I hope you're enjoying the series. Drop it a like if you are. Don't forget to sub to the channel if you aren't already. And I'll see you in episode six very soon.